Hello, I'm Morgan from Mirror Edge Networks here in Cape Town, South Africa, and this is a short video overview of the network audio and video racks that we've installed into this server room here in Cape Town. What we're going to detail is what equipment is in here, the reason why we have it laid out the way that we do, and the reasoning behind the color coordination of our cabling. We take a lot of care to ensure that the way that we install these cables is fit for purpose for our installation. All of our installations adhere to the same color code. This means that it's easy for us to know what we're installing, identify it when we're going through the process of installing it, and of course, making sure that the system is reliable after the fact. Of course, we've taken a lot of care to ensure that the cables are coming down the cable tray as neatly as possible. They come down the cable tray, across the floor, up into the relevant racks that they are destined for. And in that process, we obviously make sure that all of our cables are labeled, they're terminated correctly, we test them, we make sure that their length is suitable, and we document that so that we can provide that information to our client for any purposes that they have in the future. But also we make sure that there's a document file that's left here on site for any future servicing that we need to take place. It's great to have digital records of everything, but nothing ever beats having a physical copy on site so that if we're installing a new HDMI extender or any specific device that needs to have a certain length of cable installed onto it, there's the right information so that we can implement and ensure success. So we're incredibly happy with how this installation has turned out. I hope that you enjoy this short video which details the equipment within here. And if, as always, if you've got any questions, drop them in the comment section below. Be happy to jump on there and answer anything that you have to question. This is the network and audio video racks on our project. What I'm gonna do is detail all of the equipment that's in here, how it's laid out and what the purposes are so that you can have a better understanding of what it took to be able to achieve success with this project. Starting at the top of the equipment rack, we have what's called a network enabled PDU. This is a basically a power strip that has a web interface so we can log in and remotely turn on and off outlets from the PDU. This gives us better control so that if we need to power cycle a device, you know, maybe a DSTV decoder has gone on the blink or an Apple TV isn't responding, we can power cycle it and get it back up and running again. Beneath that, we've got the router of this project. This is quite a powerful router from Arachnus, which has a ability to remotely log into the router as well. It has a platform called Oversee, which gives us the flexibility to be able to monitor the entire network. It runs various different uh, uh, monitoring services such as network scans, internet speed tests, and we can obviously allocate IP addresses so we can separate out the network for any of the devices that we have here in the house. Beneath that, we've got a, what's called a patch panel, and then our network switch, and then another patch panel. All of the cabling that is installed into this house terminates into the patch panel. And then from there, we use short uplink cables through to the network switch. The colors on the back of the uh, patch panel correlates to the colors that are on the front. So as an example, we have blue cables coming down to the first few ports on the switch, and we have the blue patch cables coming through to the network switch. This is because we've used a specific color coordination for these, but we obviously want to keep as close as possible to the colors that are on the back of it. There is one anomaly. Over here we have a black cable, which is going where the pink and purple cables are. The cable has been installed to the security guard hut on this property, and it's a pink cable which is relating to the doorbell, which the guard has to be able to call down here. However, we were asked to implement some additional security cameras, so this cable now represents a uplink cable, and that's why we've got a black cable on the front of it. So a short summary of what colors we're using here for a better understanding. All of the Wi-Fi antennas use blue cables. Traditionally, Wi-Fi antennas have a blue light in them, which is the reason for the blue cable. The orange cables are data cables for video devices. Those would be smart TVs, Apple TVs, DSTV decoders, any devices that are within the house that have a video playback possibility. Our purple cables over here on the front are the two touch panels. We have control for touch panels within this project. Obviously, as I mentioned, the black cable goes to the security guard hut where there's a network switch in that area, and this provides the uplink to that. Uh, the pink cables over here are the control for processes that are within the house. We also have two other automation devices, being the Coolmaster and a KNX gateway that enables us to link the um, lighting control system through to our equipment rack. 
over here we've got gray cables, which are general data cables. These are for printers, computers, laptops that have wired connections into the network. Also any of our clients supplied uh, IT devices that they've asked us to add to the network. And then at the end here, we've got red cables. Red cables for us signify critical devices. These are devices which would affect the, the house or the network negatively if disconnected. Traditionally, we use these for CCTV cameras, alarm systems, and of course, we've got the uplinked to the network network PDUs because they're of critical importance in this installation, as well as the uplink to the main uplink to the router so that we can make sure that the router to the main core network switch always has internet connection. Beneath that, we've got a media server, which has all of our clients' content on it. And this runs um, various different pieces of software for them, as well as uh, Plex, which enables them to have a media playback in each of the different rooms on a Plex application on the Apple TVs. Further down to that, we've got what's called a Cool Master. A Cool Master is the interface from Control 4 to the Daikin whole house air conditioning system. Uh, off to my right hand side is a ma two massive compressors, one for the upstairs, one for the downstairs, which uh, is for the air conditioning system. And the Cool Master is the bridge between the Control 4 automation system and the Cool Master, so that on the touch panels throughout the house, you can increase decrease uh, the temperature or the amount of airflow for the heating and cooling within the house. And then right at the bottom of this rack, we have speak on connections. These are speaker connections terminated into the equipment rack, which go to in-ceiling speaker locations throughout the house for our client to be able to add in-ceiling speakers at a later stage, should you ever wish to have distributed audio in this, in this property. This is the audio video rack for this house. And once again, like our network rack, we have a network enabled PDU at the top of this rack. Beyond that, we've got the Control 4 EA3 controller, which is our main home automation controller for the project. We've got a network patch panel, which is local to the equipment within this rack. We've got a network switch, which is focused on just the equipment within this rack with a uplink to the router. And we've got a HD Anywhere video matrix. The HDMI matrix basically takes all of the HDMI sources that are in this rack into the back of the matrix. And then on one CAT6 cable out to each TV point, you have the ability to select any of those devices. So this would be to be able to choose DSTV 1, 2, or 3 in any of the bedrooms or in the cinema room. Beneath that, we've got the DSTV decoders, three DSTV Explorer Ultra decoders. We've got the Anthem MRX 1140 surround sound AVR. This is the surround sound processor with amplification for the home cinema. This also has its own dedicated Apple TV, which is plugged straight into the cinema so that you have the opportunity for Dolby Atmos and 4K HDR video playback from the Apple TV straight into the uh, Anthem surround sound AVR. And there's a audio control RS500 subwoofer amplifier, which is powering the Wisdom Audio subwoofer within the cinema room. All of the equipment is focused around the audio and video side in this rack. And uh, note that we also have a dedicated fiber HDMI cable from HD Anywhere that goes from the Anthem all the way straight through to the cinema room to the projector that's in the cinema room. So we've chosen hardware and cabling that is purpose suited for this installation so that we have a reliable solution. So I hope you've enjoyed this video overview of this audio video network installation. If you would like an installation like this, please feel free to contact us. If you have enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are making our way out to our previous installations frequently and are filming these so that we can share how we do these installations, what is entailed in the behind the scenes and what it takes to achieve success. Of course, we appreciate that our clients have allowed us the permission to come back and film these so we can share them with everybody. I suppose a testament to their satisfaction and how proud we are of our work. So please, if you'd like to see more like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel and keep an eye out for our upcoming videos.